Hello there! So, Star Wars Outlaws has had its first story DLC release called Wildcard, um, and it's pretty disappointing. Now look, I am someone who likes this game a lot. Uh, I put around 40 hours into it on release, thoroughly enjoyed my time with it, and would have given it about a 7 out of 10. My main issues were forced stealth and the failure that came along with it, the shooting mechanics didn't feel nice, and Picking up secondary weapons felt totally pointless because you couldn't carry them with you uh, if you climbed a ladder or climbed up some rocks, which was especially stupid if you grabbed something like a sniper rifle and wanted to get a better vantage point to use it because it's a sniper rifle, only for the game to force you to drop it as soon as you pulled yourself up a single rock or ledge. Really, really, really dumb. Uh, but with the update that just came out, the 1.40 release, these issues have all been addressed. Legitimately, they all got addressed in this uh, update, and I was like, oh, this is actually kind of great now. The shooting feels so much smoother. You can carry picked up weapons for longer now, including bringing some of them onto the speeder bike with you. And you can actually now climb up and get a vantage point with these weapons and not be forced to drop them. The four stealth options have been pretty much removed. So if you do get caught, you can now blast your way out or continue shooting through to your objective. Moving in and out of cover also feels so much better as does shooting from cover and the enemy AI has been improved as well. It's still not perfect, there's a little bit of jank there somewhere, but it legitimately felt like a big step up. It just feels like you've been given so much more freedom in how to approach certain situations and in all honesty, without hyperbole, this bumps the game up a whole other point to me and I would give it an 8 out of 10 right now. So while I couldn't be happier with the updates, you know, the patch notes on that front, the DLC, however, the first pack called Wildcard, uh, it, it was pretty lacklustre and disappointing in my opinion. So you team up with Lando to go to a secret Sabacc tournament uh, that takes place on a casino ship. Now it does connect back to the main story in the base game, which I liked, there was a connection there awesome. Uh, and the little story that plays out here is not actually too bad. It's entertaining enough. The problem is, is that the total time of this story DLC is about two hours. Maybe three. Maybe. The worst part is, is that after you finish, you cannot return to the casino ship where most of the DLC takes place. So you just can't go back there. The story-wise, it makes sense because you leave the place on bad terms. Um, but it just feels weird for a game to have this new section where you can, you know, supposed to be a casino, place a buck, you know, bet on Farley races, have the arcade games, have all these little things that you can do there. It just feels like this location should fit into this game world so well. And they're like, oh, here, you can spend two hours here and then you can never come back. So I found that really disappointing. Uh, the story, like I said, it was fine. I like Lando. I like it when he pops up. He's in the, in the base game as well. So seeing him here is no surprise, really. He is just really a fun, classic character. And I think he's used pretty well here. But by the end of it, I was just left wanting, uh, especially because the ending of this DLC is very abrupt. Spoilers, but you don't even really confront the main antagonist of this DLC, the one who gets you into this situation in the first place. You don't even end up really confronting them. You sort of do stuff behind the scenes in the background to get yourself out of the situation, but there's no direct confrontation with the character that sort of kicks all of this off. And that feels very, very weird, and it leaves the DLC ending in a very abrupt and unsatisfying manner. Not to mention, in a DLC called Wildcard, based around a secret Sabacc tournament, there is very little Sabacc in this DLC. I thought that I would have to play and win on like several different tables and different rounds of Sabacc with different maybe mechanics introduced, new shift tokens, new cards, new maybe variants of Sabacc. I kind of hyped myself up way too much in my head because it's it's none of that. It is stripped down Sabacc if anything because there's no shift tokens. And in all honesty in this DLC about this secret Sabacc tournament you maybe play three or four hands of Sabacc. Not rounds, hands of Sabacc before the story sort of kicks in and interrupts everything and you move on. So as someone who is obsessed with the Sabacc minigame in the base game, to get a DLC centered around Sabacc, uh, apparently, uh, this was incredibly disappointing to me. I, I was like, this kind of sucks, the lack of Sabacc in here. All in all, that DLC, it's... It's like a 5 out of 10, if that. I Maybe even a 4. I really cannot recommend getting it at this point in time unless you are just dying to play for more story content, but 
I honestly, I, I, don't, I don't think you need to. Like I said, the story aspects of it are all right. It's a fun little story, but for the length of it and the fact that you're locked out of the section after its completion, yeah, that's a no from me. I just can't recommend it. Especially when you factor in the cost of the DLC, whether you're buying the DLC standalone or in the season past, it's just not worth it at this stage. That said, I think the base game is on sale for Black Friday uh, and with the latest update that just came out with this, I honestly do recommend the base game, but I would hold off on the season pass and the DLCs until they are heavily discounted because this first one was very, very disappointing to me and very short in length. No new sections, well, a very limited section to explore, which you can't access again. No new weapons, no new really anything. I think you got a new outfit, which I will admit Kay looked very cool in. But yeah, uh, the DLC, can't recommend. The base game, though, I do recommend at this point in time. Uh, the game also released on Steam, so if you play on Steam, you can check it out there. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, the base game right now for me, 8 out of 10. Uh, this DLC, honestly, a, a 4 or a 5 out of 10. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, I've got some other videos in the works. I just put out a video about... Uh, uh, the comic series uh, Battle for Jakku Insurgency Rising that's the first four issues of that 12 part limited series we have Skeleton Crew coming up in like two weeks uh, I've got some videos coming for that some new videos that uh, Star Wars has put out about Skeleton Crew I'm gonna be watching those and that's about it so yeah thank you for watching uh, make sure you follow me here and over on TikTok and I will see you next time may the force be with you always <laughs>